Welcome or welcome back to my devlog series for a strange new genre I'm working on. Let's quickly go through the last video's to-dos and see what we got to done. Abstract Internal Ballistics With the many references provided by Phoenix from the Discord server, and the ballistics calculator Phoenix provided, check it out here, I was able to dumb down internal ballistics enough to the point where I could understand it. I chose my control parameters and got some decent looking calculations going. This might get too complex or info dumpy if I tried to explain everything here, so here's my deal with people who do want to hear all the gritty details. I'll blast through this now, so I don't have to upload a 2 hour ballistics lecture. You ask questions in the comments about what you want to know. And if there are enough questions, or the answers would be too long for a YouTube comment, I'll upload a devlog 3.5 just for you. Anyway, here you can see the debug setup I made for testing how different parameters would affect the output. It took a lot of refining and reading and rereading and squashing stupid bugs. But here you can see how the internal ballistics change over the course of 20 trials by only increasing the bullet's mass while keeping all other variables the same. The cyan lines show that a heavier bullet results in higher pressures inside the barrel. The white lines show a shallower curve, meaning the bullet takes longer to move the same distance. The green and yellow lines don't change much, indicating that fuel consumption isn't really influenced by the weight of the bullet. The magenta and red lines show that a heavier bullet has an extreme effect on muzzle velocity. Overall, it doesn't necessarily make sense that the size of a bullet wouldn't change while we increase its mass, but that's okay. The point is we can use this tool to rationalize how parameters are affecting each other. Custom Ammo Test UI here you can see the test interface I built to make somewhat customizable ammo for the test revolver. This will be available in the latest build if you want to play with it as well. You can mess with these sliders and see how they will affect the muzzle velocity, but you do need to keep the pressure limit in mind, as if you go too high. And yes, it will be slightly more impressive when that happens to you in the final game. Some sliders do have limits, for example you can't make the barrel shorter than the round, and most of them are relative, so you can set the value to anywhere between half of what it is now, or double what it is now. The only slider with a hard-coded range is Powder Shape. You may have noticed that the only scale given for the graph is Muzzle Velocity. I want to make it clear right now, this genre I'm aiming for is about evoking the sense of doing research yourself. It's extremely important that most information is only hinted at and hidden from the player. So you won't have access to this tool in the final game, you'll have to feel it out through testing. And sometimes your guns will explode. So you should probably figure out how to test the limits of your powder mixtures before you go around shooting random ammo. Diegetic Custom Ammo Interface I haven't properly started on this, though there will be a bit more to discuss later. Rather, I realized it was kind of silly to start working on this feature when I only have one gun to put ammo in. You really have to be careful when developing, especially when working solo. It's extremely easy to get tunnel vision and keep pushing forward in a single direction. When what I actually need to do is get all the mechanics up to the same level so they can be integrated together early to weed out problems between systems early. So what did I do instead? I decided to make some small additions to the controls. You can now use the scroll wheel to cock the revolver. In the final game, I imagine this will allow you to use your thumb to cock the gun, instead of forcing you to use your other hand. It also has the nice side effect of being able to uncock it as well. Now, pressing the middle mouse button can also be used as a thumb shortcut. In this case, it allows you to toggle the safety. Finally, I thought this was already a feature, but thanks to a commenter making me verify it, you can now grab things without leaving focus mode, which makes reloading a little more straightforward. Well that was fun, I was able to get a bit more done than normal thanks to the winter holidays, but what wasn't quite so fun was getting those charts to work. I had to recompile the Kanton Charts plugin since it's only available for UE 5.1 and earlier. It looks like the dev might have abandoned the project, but it's hard to say for sure. Not only is it free, but when you can get it working, it does a really great job. So I hope the author finds time to keep maintaining the project again someday. Rebuilding it wasn't too big of a deal, though there are a few engine differences that cause trouble. The actual thing I slammed my head against the wall for a while was realizing that there doesn't seem to be a good time to initialize the chart, as other parts of the code will come and screw up the configuration after construction, such that nothing gets drawn. Short of rewriting the internals of the plugin, 
The only other thing to do was just add a zero frame delay so the configuration wouldn't get wiped. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. We blew up. As of recording this, the channel is just over 2k subs. And crazier than that, the project has technically received its first backers. One person donated $5 on itch.io. I actually thought they made a mistake when downloading the input test and offered to give them a refund, but they said they just wanted to support the project. And even crazier than that, three people managed to find the Patreon and signed up to back the project monthly. So I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who donated, commented, subbed, or even just stopped by for a quick view. You know, I recently found out that every time you say subscribe, or please subscribe, or something like that, the subscribe button flashes underneath the video. So that's kind of cool. In regards to donations, I want to point out that I'm not asking anyone to donate and I'm not offering any special perks or incentives to get people to donate either. In my opinion, it's absolutely too early for that and I have a lot to prove before I can ask for support. But I will tell you right now, any money that people donate to the project will only be used for the project and only if it's totally necessary. On that note, I've had some people drop by the Discord and offer their help. Of course, I absolutely appreciate this, but again, I'm still quite early stages, so mostly I will just give you a role on the Discord in relation to your talents and hope that you'll be ready when the time comes. Finally, YouTube says we're getting close to some milestones to be able to apply for things like channel memberships and monetization. Are people out there interested in channel memberships and custom emoji? It sounds like a bunch of stuff I'd have to set up and I'd kind of rather spend time working on the game, but let me know what you all think. If people really want it, then I can look more into what that's all about. And about monetization, I heard that YouTube doesn't even let you turn off ads anymore. But if we reach that milestone, I guess I can check if that option still exists or not. Though I could easily see the channel being rejected for monetization, since it's kind of about making certain things that the algorithm probably doesn't like. Alright, as per usual, let's talk about what the next steps are. While I did say that I rescheduled working on the diegetic UI for custom ammo, French Goose offered to help me prototype a tool for selecting the dimensions of an ammo casing. The current design will be a medium-sized disc that you can pick up and rotate the bottom tray. The tray will have a bunch of cases of different diameters around the edge of the tray. You can spin the tray in either direction to get to whatever case diameter you want, and there will be a dial on top you can use to set the length of the case. Then, just like with a revolver, you will be able to grab the case and pull it into your hand. As always, feel free to provide any feedback on the design in the comments below. In the meantime, I'll get started implementing various different guns with different mechanics. I'll probably need to implement a couple variations of each, pistol, shotgun, and rifle. Once those are all done, I can use what I learned implementing those mechanics to figure out how I can start enabling guns to be built directly in-game, and then get the first version of the design mode up and running. Since we're already here, why don't we go ahead and run through the first new design, together? I know I've already got single and double action revolvers here, but revolvers are always cool and you can usually see a lot of the moving parts. So how about something even cooler? A semi-automatic revolver that can shoot shotgun shells too. Now I don't really want any companies coming after me for implementing their designs in-game unlicensed, so I guess we'll have to design something new and see how many extra features we can slap on it. First. We're going to need something big if we're shooting some shot shells. Let's take the base of the design from the Taurus Judge. But move that barrel down to add more cool, I mean, to reduce recoil of course. Oh, and if it's semi-auto, let's add some Webley Fosberry in there too. Actually, if we're talking about reducing recoil, let's go all the way and toss a Mateba MTR in the mix. Now isn't that just a beautiful mess? I bet this baby is going to have zero recoil. We might need to change some things up as we go, but the important thing is it's got a bunch of new features to implement. I guess we'll call our new prototype hand cannon... the debugger. Hopefully we can get at least this gun done in time for the next devlog. Let me know if you have any ideas for improvements or other features I should prioritize, and I hope I'll see you next time.